Good evening, everyone, and welcome to this wonderful evening. I hope you all have answered the daily 30 questions, 30 MCQs, which has been given as a quiz tournament for all of you. So every day we are going to have uh, uh, a live session, which is uh, 30 questions quiz, sharp at 6 o'clock. After the quiz is over, try to get the link of the quiz beforehand. After the quiz is over, you are going to have discussion. So all these evening sessions are meant daily across the year in order to give that required boost for your uh, preparation for NEET PG. Also, there are about 50 faculty, excellent national faculty, who are going to be part of the live class every day evening. So that not only Dr. Murli Bharatwaj's face you will be bored with, you have a lot of teachers who are joining. Then another very good thing that we are going to do, which is very unique for Incas, is uh, we spoke to almost 200 toppers among the top 5,000 ranks who recently topped the NEET PG exam. They all said, yes, sir, we want to be the catalyst in the success of the newly preparing students for the NEET PG. Wow, that's great. So, these NEET PG toppers, they also conduct a lot of evening live interactive sessions where on the strategy of for the exam or any specific doubts, you can always directly seamlessly interact with this uh, most recent toppers who know the secret on how to win the NEET PG exam. People of our generation, we are good teachers, but you will Enjoy learning more and more and more when you are sitting with the most recent Meet PG topper. If they become the part of your journey, then you will enjoy preparing for the Meet PG. So Incas is the only app where, please download the Incas app, where all the Meet PG toppers are going to be the part of your social forum and available round the clock to help you for the strategy of your preparation, one-on-one, -on -one, private tutoring, etc., etc. So let's make the great beginning, Doctor. Now, I hope you all have taken the quiz which was before this session. Yes. Now, what is the reason for the methicillin resistant Staphylococcus aureus? One of the very important questions. It is the penicillin binding protein, where there are some structural changes in the penicillin binding protein, which is responsible for the methicillin resistance of the Staphylococcus aureus. A patient is having hypertension, is also suffering from essential tremor. For that essential tremor, beta blockers are considered a very important part of the treatment. And it is the propranolol, which is the preferred one, which is a non-selective beta blocker, which is useful 
not only for hypertension, but also for the management of the essential tremor is what you have to emphatically remember. So if you're treating a hyperlipidemic patient with nicotinic acid, what will it result in? There's a decrease in both the plasma cholesterol and also triglycerides. If, for example, statins. If you're using a statin, then, uh, uh, yeah. I hope I'm audible. Am I audible, doctor? Am I audible, doctor? Good. Now, nicotinic acid, it inhibits the synthesis of the VLDL EPO protein. It decreases the VLDL production, always the most important rule. Exogenous triglycerides are carried by chylomicrons. Endogenous triglycerides predominantly are carried by VLDL. So that is the reason nicotinic acid typically has an effect both on the cholesterol and also on triglycerides. That's a point you need to appreciate. Now, a 40-year-old man was given a drug that binds to a subunit of GABA-A receptor. It can open chloride channels independent of the GABA. What is the drug? That is classically phenobarbital. So benzodiazepines, barbiturates, ethanol, all of them modulate the action of GABA-A receptor. Then among the GABA-A drugs, only the barbiturates have a GABA mimicking activity. That is what you need to appreciate. Now, a 29 year old is being treated with antidepressant drug and his mood is improving. But he's feeling jittery, agitated at times. And he, is, he has lost weight during six months. Now a very important question comes. What is the drug which can lead to the weight loss as a presenting feature? Weight loss as a presenting feature. So you must be very sure that it is the SSRIs which are associated, like peroxidin, they lead to sedation, jitters, and sometimes you need to use concomitantly a strongly sedating drug like Trazodone. Along with them is uh, what I want to underscore to all of you. And SSRI is always best taken in the morning to avoid the problems of insomnia. And they typically need to weight loss, at least during the first 12 months is what I want to underscore to all of you. Now the drug and the mechanism of action. How does lithium function? Remember, lithium is sure short MCQ in the tomorrow's new PG exam, doctor. Lithium inhibits the recycling of the inositol is what you have to remember. Lionzolic can lead to bone marrow suppression is one of the side effects. A seven-year-old with pharyngitis, he is typically sensitive to amoxicillin. Then what is the preferable choice? Always azithromycin is very good for the upper respiratory tract infection as all of you know very well. Now, 
Most of the diseases due to nematodes. How do you treat? We offer mebendazole. Mebendazole is the drug of choice for the treatment of nematodes like hookworm, roundworm, pinworm, whipworm. And pyrantal is uh, effective for, it is generally as effective as mebendazole for the nematodes. And for the tapeworms and flukes, cestodes and trematodes, transequental is considered to be very effective, is what I want to underscore to all of you. Once more, doctor, the different drugs, antibiotics, what is their mechanism is a favorite question of the examiner. So, clindamycin, clindamycin, uh, Typically bind with the RNA basis on the 50 yes subunit. And by doing so, it prevents the translocation of the peptidyl mRNA from the acceptor to the donor site, is what you need to remember. Now, what is the resistance? Why there is a resistance for the methicillin resistant staph audience? It is once for the PDDs, modification of the penicillin binding proteins, which is uh, responsible for the MRSC. A HIV patient is on Zidovudine, Lamivudine, Indinavir, Ketoconazole, Cotrimoxazole, and he develops breast hypertrophy, central obesity, adiposity, hyperlipidemia, nephrolithiasis, which is a very important clue. So that points us towards in the Navi is the one which is basically responsible for those toxicity profile is what you need to remember. Algonary hypertension, we use prostaglandin like hypoprostenol. Acute poisoning of acetaminophen. How does the antidote function? So basically antidote supplies the sulfhydryl groups and detoxifies the reactive metabolite, is what you need to remember. Because acetaminophen, how is it metabolized, doctor? It is by the glucuronidation. Acetaminophen is metabolized into an inactive metabolite, is what I want to underscore to all of you. A patient is having allergic rhinitis because of the pollen. And you want to give a drug that at least likely to lead to sedation. So what is the choice? Loretidine is considered to be the treatment of choice for the pollen-induced allergies, which is a H1 antagonist is what you need to remember. Then patent ductus arteriosus. If you want to maintain the patency, patent ductus patency ko maintain karne ke liye aap dena padega prostaglandin is what you need to remember now ibuprofen naproxen why do we use it in dysmenorrhea typically they are the, the decrease PGE to PGF2 alpha that is the reason we use them for the primary dysmenorrhea a cancer patient is being treated with 6 mercaptopurin and he requires a dosage adjustment if they are concurrently treated with which drug. So suppose if chronic gut, chronic gut disorder, gout disorder is there. So for the gout you need to use a uricosuric drug, right? So. Allopurinol is a uricosuric drug that prevents the formation of the uric acid from purines by acting as a suicide substrate for the xanthine oxidase. That is, xanthine oxidase try to consume the allopurinol, binds with it, and then that destroys the xanthine oxidase. And the 6 mercaptopurines metabolism is also dependent on xanthine oxidase. That is the reason you need to be careful when you are treating a cancer patient concomitantly because cancer patients have hyperuricemia. Cancer patients have hyperuricemia. 
if to treat hyperuricemia if you are using allopurinol you should be careful if you are administering the anti neoplastic mercaptopurin then there is a drug interaction between the two is what i want to underscore to all of you so remember doctor once more i am telling you you can also tell your friends 6 pm to 7:30 pm evening every day all 365 days we have a live class monday to saturday tomorrow dr ravi kiran sir he is ms orthopedics excellent teacher in orthopedics he is taking class at 6 pm please don't forget please invite all your friends similarly dr akanksha is a great teacher in gynecology and obstetrics so in the week three days in the evening dr ravi kiran and three days by dr akanksha there is a live class evening 6 o'clock keep yourself tuned please click on the bell sign so that you get the notification be part of our whatsapp group we will shout and tell you that the class is going to start and there are some excellent teachers you can see in our youtube channel lot of videos of the lot of neat pg toppers who wanted to teach to the upcoming aspirants yes we encourage tomorrow also when you get the top rank no become our teacher and uh, do the revision for the future generations of students so doctor adp receptor blocker which prevent platelet aggregation which one it is the clopidogrel clopidogrel so if you look at the platelet aggregation adp thromboxane a2 fibrin serotonin any of them can be responsible aspirin inhibits thromboxane a2 synthesis prostacyclin from the endothelial cells naturally inhibits the platelet aggregation by stimulating pgi2 receptors abscisimab is a monoclonal antibody against the glycoprotein 2b3 a receptor and inhibits aggregation that is what you need to remember and the place is a thromboidic agent it is fibrinolytic agent so if too much of it is leading to bleeding by breaking down the fibrin then you require anti fibrinolytic agent that will be epsilon amino caproic acid is used to antagonize the bleeding caused by alteplase is what i want to underscore to all of you clomiphene induces ovulation improves fertility which drug can inhibit steroidogenesis typically azoles ketoconazole inhibits steroidogenesis and lead to adrenal suppression is what you should remember which medication it has a which medication has a side effect of nephrotoxicity rather than bone marrow suppression it is the cisplatin which has a nephrotoxicity as a major side effect a patient is undergoing cancer chemotherapy and has a increase in urinary frequency there is hematuria mild leukopenia so which drug so you know very well that uh, uh cyclophosphamide can lead to hemorrhagic cystitis which can lead to the development of hematuria is what you need to remember 
A three-year-old child was brought to the emergency because he took a lot of pills. He has a severe GI discomfort, vomiting, bloody vomitus. And the mother was uh, taking some vitamins. So probably all these symptoms are related to iron toxicity. So that is the reason we use deferoxamine as a antidote in this given scenario. So for the lead arsenic mercury, dimercaprol is the antidote. EDTA for the lead poisoning, penicillamine for copper poisoning, succimab for lead poisoning in kids. These antidotes are the favorite question of the examiner. There are cardiac arrhythmias you want to manage. Lidocaine is being given intravenously. What are the variables required to calculate loading dose? This is a beautiful question, doctor. Favorite question of the examiner. So you should remember. To calculate loading dose, what is the formula? It is the volume of distribution and target plasma concentration, which are important. Lidocaine is given intravenously. Its bioavailability is 100%. So, for the maintenance dose, you require renal clearance. And uh, for the loading dose, what is the formula? You need to know this formula very clearly. Desired peak concentration of the drug. Volume of distribution, bioavailability, and salt fraction. Accordingly, desired plasma concentration and volume of distribution on the numerator, and bioavailability is on the denominator. So, if you have given any drug intravenously, you should remember that uh, uh, bioavailability is 100%. So, that is the reason only thing you need to know is volume of distribution in order to calculate the loading dose. But after Bola doctor, all the formulas, volume of distribution is equal to dose divided by concentration at zero time. T half is equal to 0 0.7 into volume of distribution by clearance. Infusion rate is equal to Clearance into steady state concentration. Loading dose is equal to volume of distribution into the plasma concentration divided by the bioavailability comes in denominator. And for maintenance dose, clearance into steady state concentration into dosing interval divided by the bioavailability. One MCQ guaranteed in the need PG. Doubt it chinahi. Brava, be very sure about it, doctor. Now, captopril. Yes, Limita. It is good to prevent the progression of the diabetic nephropathy. How does ribavirin basically function? It is an RNA polymerase inhibitor. Ribavirin inhibits the replication of the RNA and the DNA viruses. It is first phosphorylated to 5-phosphate derivative. And it inhibits the guanosine triphosphate formation. It prevents the viral messenger mRNA capping. And it blocks the RNA dependent RNA polymerase, is what you need to remember. A woman has a sexually transmitted disease, and you want to treat her outpatient basis. And there are unpleasant reactions if she takes alcohol. 
That's called disulfiram reaction, which is very common with the metronidazole is what you need to basically remember. Bacterial meningitis. It is the third generation cephalosporins, which are the common drugs of choice. But in neonatal meningitis, third generation cephalosporins are not that effective against Listeria monocytogenes. Whereas if Listeria is there in neonatal meningitis, ampicillin is also needed, not just the cephotaxin. That's the point you need to appreciate. So that brings us, doctor, to the end of the today's short journey. So every day, evening, 6 to 7.30, if you are constantly participating in a live discussion on the Inca app and on this YouTube channel, Every Sunday we have a grand test and a discussion. You are going to be topping the entrance exam with a great ease. So with that spirit, let us all prepare for the entrance exam. Thank you.